In this video, I'm going to be repairing a Whirlpool refrigerator, model number located here, by simply replacing one little sensor. I'll get into what this refrigerator has been doing, why I'm replacing it, and how I came to find that this sensor was bad. All right, hey everybody, welcome back. As you can see from that intro, I'm gonna be repairing this Whirlpool refrigerator. Uh, if yours has the water maker insert like you see here, this is more than likely going to work for you. Now, getting into what this refrigerator has been doing over the course of about five months. What's happening is the freezer will work fine, but the refrigerator starts to not cool. It gets warm inside. Now, the first time what I found was the condenser was freezing up inside the fridge and I will be going through that. This will be a very detailed video as to how to tear that apart and how to tell that that's what's freezing up. Now in my situation it was freezing up so bad that it was getting up to the fan that pushes the cold air from the freezer into the refrigerator. That's how the fridge cools on most of these bottom mount freezers. The condenser cools the freezer to freezing temperatures and then there is a door that opens, allowing the fan to push cold air up into the refrigerator. Now what happened was my ice built up and it stopped that fan from spinning. Meaning no cold air could get in here, not enough anyways to keep the refrigerator cold. So I tore it apart, tested things, didn't think there was an issue. I mean obviously there was, but I couldn't find one. So I defrosted it with a hair dryer, put it back together, and about three months later, the same thing happened. So I repeated the process, but this time I put the refrigerator into a forced defrost cycle, which I will show you how to do in this video, because if you're replacing it, it's gonna be easier if you do that manually versus a hairdryer. It defrosts way quicker using its own defroster. Now, what I had found out, actually through watching other YouTube videos, and it was really hard to find information on this refrigerator, I finally found info showing how to replace and test the thermistor on the freezer. Now, what happens is this thermistor goes bad internally, and it continuously tells the freezer that it's 80 degrees, meaning it won't go into the defrost cycle on its own, which causes the condenser to ice up and it continuously runs the freezer because it thinks it's 80 degrees. So it ices up at a tremendously faster rate than it normally would. Now, how can you tell if this freezer is icing up and that's your problem? There's two ways you can tell. One, you can tear the freezer apart, tear the access panel out and visually put eyes on it and see if it's iced up. So the video I just showed you, the quick reference there with my finger pointing, that is the area that's gonna ice up. That is the access panel. That's gonna frost up pretty, pretty bad. It'll be a noticeable layer of frost. And that is a strong indication that your defrost cycle is not starting and that your freezer is running way too long because it's building up that moisture and that ice. So. There's not really a whole lot more to say other than showing you how to tear this thing apart. You're gonna be able to do it with a very limited amount of tools. You can do the whole project with something like this. Now I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna just use a socket from this on a impact driver. It's quicker and it's easier and I just prefer to use this instead. So before you tear it apart, you're probably frosted up really bad. And what you wanna do is you wanna put your control panel in service mode. And I will show you how to do that now. Okay, so on your control panel here, you're gonna to wanna to turn the freezer temp to its lowest setting. That's the most important part. Then once you have that on its lowest setting, you wanna push and hold these two buttons. You will see every light turn on for a split second followed by that tone you heard and it'll go black. Now this is your select button for the settings in your service mode. And it'll light these up in a different patterns. Your first one tests the blower. 
and turns it off. The second one tests the condenser. Now off. The third one, when you have three like this, it is the defroster. Now that forces the defroster on. If your defroster does turn on with these three lights on when you have the access panel off, that means it's working. There's nothing wrong with the defroster itself. It's probably a sensor issue. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and defrost so that I can get all my ice buildup out of there and proceed with the repair. Now if you're antsy like me and you don't wanna wait for that defrost cycle to stop, it runs for about 20 minutes per test. Uh, you can start tearing your freezer door off and getting these trays out of the way so that you can get that access panel off all the way. And you can do that. The easiest way to get these out, I've seen various different ways. I'm gonna show you the easiest way in my opinion. Start by getting your socket, figure out which one it takes. I am using a quarter inch socket and begin by removing these little self-tapping screws. I will add that you don't have to take the screws all the way out if you don't want to. These are slotted for ease of installation. So you can leave them on if you want to. For some reason I took them all the way out this time. Once you have the freezer door off, you can start by removing this top tray. There are two tabs on the bottom edge and you're going to want to push it back and it'll release. It's going to be a little bit of a bear, but it will come off. Okay. That's what the first tray looks like when it comes off. As you can see, you just got to work the two corners and push it back. Now the bottom tray, there are four tabs. And you want to release those tabs and pull straight up. Once you did that successfully, this is pretty much out of your way. You can push it in all the way, get it out of your way as best as possible. Then you can remove the ice maker. Once you get your ice tray out, you can move on to the access panel. Sorry for any echo in here. This is the sensor that we want to replace. So you can go ahead and unplug it, cut the zip tie, and pop it off of this metal tube coming out of the condenser here. Uh, it looks like this one is taped on. Our replacement is a clip-on, so you may have to cut that. Cut very carefully and cut high. You want to damage the old sensor not part of the condenser.
And that's what the old sensor looks like. As you can tell, the replacement is updated and a lot better looking quality. Now I'm gonna let this sit to room temp to double check it and test it. Either way, I'm putting a new one in, but that'll verify for sure that this was the issue. All right, as promised, I said I was gonna show you how I know that the sensor's bad. I have the old sensor. Get yourself an ohm meter and back probe this terminal. It's gonna be the easiest way for you to do that. And as you can see, it is reading 0.548 K ohms, kilo ohms. You want it to read about 2.1 K ohms. And uh, this is saying it's actually more like 100 degrees in the freezer from the research I've found, which is meaning it's not turning the defroster on or it's turning it off too soon. So uh, your new one should read like 2.1 or 2.7 K ohms. Again, here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Old one that was aluminum foil taped on and new one that simply clips on. Verify plug-in style, they are the same. So we're good to go. All right, climb into the abyss one more time with your new sensor and Reverse of removal for the exception of the tape. Just go ahead and clip this on, plug it in. You should be good to go, put it back together and carry on with your life. Clip this on. Should be good. It's as easy as that. Now, just put everything back the way it came out. Again, if this helped you out, it would mean the world to me if you hit that subscribe button. It helps this channel out so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out because I had to do a lot of digging to find the information for this refrigerator. I hope it helped you and I will see you in the next video. Please subscribe to my dad's channel.